Don't get caught up in the flashy of today because those things fade. Don't go for the fast money, go for the longevity. Go slow grind, work no matter how long. Even if you don't see progress that night, next day you'll see the progress if you continue and you stay focused. So never give up, man. Yo Gorillas, welcome to the Athlete Insider Podcast by Gore Nation. My name is Phil and today's guest is a special guest. Somebody that I was looking forward to interview from the beginning on of this podcast interview. Somebody that you requested since the beginning, an endurance legend, a calisthenics legend, somebody who inspires athletes out there in the whole world. I'm really happy to make this possible and that you take the time, Zef Zaccavelli. Yes, I'm Zef Zaccavelli. <laughs> um, you know can't say anything more great yeah i'm really happy to make this possible uh, really happy that you make this possible with your time and we directly can kick off with the question for the people who don't know you or uh, who would like to know how you present yourself who is uh, zef zaccavelli how do you present yourself um i'm Zach, zef zaccavelli the, the student and the teacher at the same time i've been doing calisthenics for For many years, many decades, you know, and I'm still learning as as we speak right now. So that's it. I just try to try to travel the world and make friends and um, teach people and help motivate and inspire people. It's just a simple dude right there. Great. Sounds really great. And uh, yeah, before we uh, get into the story, how you uh, found your sport, etc. Um, let's uh, kick off with the hard facts that people are always interested in. How tall are you? 5'10". Uh, 5'10". Uh, do you know the centimeters number? It's always... <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You know, it's Americans, man. Yeah. Yeah. 5, 10 in centimeters, it's uh, 178. So exactly like me, 178 centimeters for the for the European per people. Um, how old are you? I'm 43 years old. 43. Wow. Uh, that's uh, that's also really interesting. Didn't, uh, yeah, I, like, of course I know it, but uh, if, if I see you like this, uh, I don't expect it. So uh, that's also a really, really cool thing. And the last question, how heavy are you? I, I fluctuate from 147 pounds to 157. 157 okay. being the heaviest I weigh. Currently, right now, I, I, I'm probably 150, 149 right now. Okay. That's around 70, uh, 67 kg uh, again for the, yeah. uh, the European listeners. <laughs> 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 Great. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get back a few years, I guess. Um, how did you get in touch with the sport? How did I get in touch with the sport? Um, well, it, it became a sport while I was um, trying it out. Um, I can't say it, it didn't exist as a sport, you know, and I, I still don't really think it's a sport right now officially. So um, I've, I've been doing calisthenics since uh, I was a child, since um, my brother used to punish me by doing push-ups. <laughs> so, you know, throughout the years, it's been off and on as a teenager. I got introduced to weights and started working out to, to gain size. I always wanted to gain size because I was always the smallest guy. So, um, I would say like fast forward to 1996 and it just became strictly calisthenics because even though we would do weight training, our, our weight training would consist of the the routines that we do now in calisthenics. So our breaks would be calisthenics and then to the weights and back, back and forth, vice versa, just like that. So I say 1996, we left the weights alone because of all the injuries and we started to be more competitive with the calisthenics more than the weights. So we just, we just stuck to the, the calisthenics from there. So I would say from 96, 97. Wow. Wow. Uh, like most of the listeners, I guess, will be born after this uh, because we have like a few, like a lot of uh, young listeners. Um, you said that you uh, had like a lot of injuries uh, with weights. Um, can you explain that more? Um, uh, we used to bench a lot because doing the bench press, that's like the, 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 the standard right there to show that you're strong and not how much you could bench press. Yeah. So um, I, learned my, I learned my breathing technique from that also. I used to get a lot of headaches because I would hold my breath 
when we when we um, bench press. And the way how we would start our workouts, we would do the max. So we'd take all the weights that we have in the gym, I mean in the gym, in, in the basement, <laughs> stack it on the, the, the barbell and try to lift the max and try to max out and try to progress every day. So I would notice I would get a headache every day and that, w- I, that would be from me holding my breath. So besides the headache, the headaches I used to get, um, I, I was always, again, I was always the smallest guy. So I would be trying to push more than I should. And that would lead to chest injury, shoulder, sometimes on my bicep. And it started to get frustrating because anytime I would make progress, I would get injured and it would set me back like two steps. So okay. that, that's, that, that was really, that was really it for me as far as like the injuries nothing serious as far as me having to go get surgery or any, anything like that okay fortunately fortunately true um yeah how did your first trainings in calisthenics go like uh you said uh, push-ups was one of the the basic exercise was it always push-ups dips muscle-ups uh, pull-ups or it was always push-ups push-ups was always like the blueprint because it was no excuse yeah You know, no matter where you were, you were able to do push-ups, and that's how we would compete. You know, I have a lot of friends that that been away. They they would come home or they'll come to the block where I used to hang out and chill, mm-hmm. and that would be a challenge. You know, as as men, who you like to challenge each other, and push-ups was one of those things. So who could do more? Who could stop? Or who could break first? So push-ups was always the number one, and that's what really got me strong. Okay. When I hear that, uh, how you talk, uh, it really seems that, like as you uh, as you said, maybe already a little, uh, that calisthenics wasn't isn't like a sport for you or only like your workout or something, but it really it's like part of your life, like it was your lifestyle. Maybe uh, also compare it uh, to skating, like uh, skaters always, uh, like it's their their how they spend their times to hang hang around with friends, uh, skate a little, and like for calisthenics athletes, I see a lot that they let like just the group that dynamic of the group is to work out together to hang out together uh, to do some challenges is it like this that that's that's how it was for us when we started as far as like the pioneers of it i, I would say that's how it started for us it wasn't a sport it wasn't a it wasn't that many competitions it wasn't any competitions at the time when i started so that's what made it hard for me when competitions start uh, happening for me to enter a competition to be judged by people who just started, you understand? Like, <laughs> I, I felt like, how can you judge me? How can you tell me I'm doing it wrong when you just learning yourself and you don't know what wrong or right is? So that's why I'm saying when you first asked the question of what introduced me to the sport, it was, it was no sport. It, like, you, like you just said, it was a culture. Calisex mm-hmm. is a culture and it still is to me to this day. Get it. Um Yeah, but, but I still liked your attitude that you're the teacher and the uh, the student at the same time. So uh, like uh, still like uh, learning and uh, like open to, to feedback. I, that's how it sounds for me. But still, I can imagine that the situation like uh, being judged by somebody who is like doing the sport for one or two years and you're doing it for, I don't know, five years, 10 years, even longer. Uh, that's a, a funny situation or a weird situation that you have to put your ego beside, I guess. Or, um... Yeah. 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 It, it, it is funny because those, those competitions that started at that time, the first, besides it being um, basic reps where you count the, the reps, the, when the freestyle competitions can, I would say the, the form again, that's based on opinion, you know, uh, a move that I might do will take a, a lot of strength compared to, a momentum move that someone else would do, but will look more flashier, he would get a higher score. You understand? So those, those variables right there turned me off from competing in a a freestyle competition. And as far as a basic competition, you know, full, full ROM and the biasnesses of the competition and the judges lead to a conflict also. And that, that got me away from, from those type of things also. Yeah, I can understand. Um, 
we received a lot of questions about the barbarians uh, and uh, like your your team, your project, etc. Uh, do you want to uh, take us uh, in the in the story of the barbarians? Where do I start? Um, as far as barbarians, as far as the name barbarians, and I, I said this story, you know, a million times. <laughs> barbarians is not the act of being barbaric. It's more of being from a place where there's nothing but bars, you know, to work out. You know, like if there was a planet called Bar, I would be a, from that planet. So I'm mm -hmm. a barbarian. You understand? So that's that's as far as the how the name came about. Um, we always, I always had a group of friends that would work out and do calisthenics, but we never really formed a group or came up with a name or say we could be a team or we was already a family, but a team until we seen that. You know, I, I give credit to the bartenders for that. It was another um, New York group that they came up with a team and they made it cool to have like a team, a workout team. So that's when we decided or I decided Barbarians, that's going to be our name, you know, for what we do right here. You know, as time progressed, um, you know, I didn't want people to just join the the group just because they were they had a back and arms and pull-ups just to wear my shirt and just to have the brand and walk around we wasn't a gang you understand I, I cared more about quality so you had to prove yourself that you was worthy of representing barbarians so i came up with the requirements where you had to do a certain amount of reps in a certain amount of time at a, in a certain form with quality That was like the first requirement at that time, physical requirement at that time, which I learned that the physical part is very, you know, that that's second priority right there. The main priority is the character and the loyalty was number one. So no matter if you were strong enough to do the requirements, that didn't mean you was a barbarian because you didn't fit that that mold, that character of what it means to be a barbarian and, and we are family, in a sense. So mm -hmm. throughout the years, I, I, lear I learned that from people who joined and people who, you know, fell out that they it, it wasn't a good mesh. They had different motives of joining barbarians. And, you know, I learned. So the requirements got tougher and tougher every year as it is today. Okay, and the the requirements today for the people uh, who are asking themselves, "Oh, can I? Could I do it? Uh, can you uh, tell the requirements of today?" The physical requirements, the BBRs, mm -hmm. the BBRs is five muscle ups, fifty dips, thirty pull ups, sixty push ups, five muscle ups within five minutes, and you can't break any number. And the form has to be near perfect. Okay, so you can make a break, do a break uh, after the muscle ups, for example, uh, before the push up, uh, the dips. Sorry, but uh, you can't interrupt your dips to and split them into two sets. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yes. Nice. Um, yeah. Uh, a question that just popped into my mind: When was the first time that you uh, heard the 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 name calisthenics, the word? I, I can't I can't even tell you that but is it that's, like that's a lot is it 12 years ago or 20 or I don't know like approximately that, yeah that's that's over 30 years ago 30 over wow 30, okay. yeah over over 30 years ago wow okay. I, I could I could think of that Because like, um, I don't know, it, it feels so weird, this interview, because uh, like mo when I have somebody who is like doing calisthenics for 10 years, he's like an OG. He's like somebody who is doing the sport for a long, long time. And you're the one like uh, that is in the sport for such a long time <laughs> that it that it feels so weird to, to just uh, like, yeah, to, I don't know, because like you're doing the sport for such a long time and uh, you're like... Um, I don't know how to, you know, you see my confusion. It's, it's just, <laughs> it's just <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's talk about the, the evolution and the development of, of calisthenics. Um, how do you see the, the beginnings of the sport? How do you see the sport today? The, the development from your eyes? 
Oh, it, it, it's 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 going good. Um, at a point it was it was stagnant for a while, but um, I, I like that. Um, it's more broad now, and it's 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 not a how could I say it? At a point there was the freestylers and the people that did the reps and sets, and they would you know have a conflict. Now I see like it it, it coexists now, and it's accepted. You know you could be good at freestyling elements and you can be good at reps and, and whatever you, you want to do. Um, I see the growth. I see the, that YouTube, uh, the YouTube um, changed a lot. Also, it, it, it become now like a profession now, you know, people could actually make money off of calisthenics now. And I, I think that's a, that's a good thing, but um I also feel it's kind of bad in the sense that people don't give recognition to how it started or or shine light on the culture aspect of it and not so much keeping the spotlight on them and just trying to propel themselves. Um, com- competition, competition wise, um, I see that it's gotten better too because there's more people doing it. Um, through the course of time, I feel it would get better and a, a, a stricter judging system would be implemented. Something like the Olympics where it could have a guideline for for the freestylers that is just not straight based on opinion, it's based on skill and skill level of the move that they did. Um, as far as reps concerned, it should be it, it should be some standard of what a decent rep is and what is not. But um, we'll we'll get there. Um, I, we'll get there. I, I like how it's going though. And not so many words. It, it, it's fine. Okay. Cool. Um, how does your workout schedule look like today? Because you're you're like a father, right? Uh, so you're also uh, limited yeah, in, yeah. in in time. Uh, so how does your workout schedule look like today? For a week. Oh. Um. <laughs> For the for the for the since the COVID um and since it's it's winter I I haven't been working out as much I just been doing my Zoom training and my Patreon and just designing programs and making my videos when I can. It's the the training right now is kind of it's kind of down right now because of the the schedule with the kids and I, I don't have that much access anymore. I don't want to really go to the gym anymore. My my home setup is so much I could do. I, I, I really love being outdoors. So I'm just um, waiting to the spring. And then plus, I, I told you about the surgery that I have. So I really want to get past that so I could heal and come back fresh for spring. Okay. So that's that's my typical day. Um, I, I still I still manage every night. Um, I, I still have to do a clip. I, I still have to do a 40, 80 push-ups just to maintain mm-hmm. and just to check to, to, to know that I'm not falling off. You know, my, one of my goals for the winter was to be able to do 50 pull-ups indoors. And I was able to do that last week. So Congrats. I'm, 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 I still got it. I'm not that old yet. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> What does uh, 40, 80 mean? 40, 80, 40 pull-ups, okay. 80 push-ups r- okay. right after each other. Wow. Well, respect for that. Um, so like um, people are, I know that people will ask now, yeah, but your normal workout schedule for a week, like, uh, can you uh, also sh- uh, like um, tell how you train like normally, how does one week, how is your split, you know, like stuff like that. Okay, um, I say like a summer, summer, a summer week or summertime. Um, it it changes. I I don't like to keep a certain uh, schedule because it gets boring. It starts to turn to work. Mm-hmm. work. Working out to me should be fun, you know. So it it changes every day. I I could just tell you the only thing that stays the same is the time that I work out. So I would start at six o'clock, go to the park, depending on. Who came to work out that day i would design the routine that we're going to do that day if, if it's by, me by myself which usually it's not because I, i really don't like to work out by myself anymore because I, i don't i don't push myself as much when i'm by myself i, I would have to put on a camera <laughs> so it, 
It will start with um a warm up of a uh, on the minute. On the minute is a uh, 25 push ups on the minute every minute. Based on how good I'm in shape, it will either be 20 minutes or 40 minutes. I don't go past the 60 anymore. Do 60 anymore because mm-hmm. I, I start getting bored quick now. <laughs> so 40 40 minutes warm up of push ups 25 on the minute. Then I'll go to the poles. You know, again, it, it varies on who's around, what routine I'm going to do. And I will go back to the push-ups and I will go back and forth, depending on how much time and, and the mood. Okay. So, it, And that's that's how it will go pretty much every day. Wow. But, uh, like, like, I, I say like a four-hour workout. Four-hour workout, Okay. But the exercise that you do, um, like you also do muscle ups, or is it just, uh, I don't know, to show off, like n- not to show off, but uh, like uh, you also do like uh, dips or uh, muscle ups, right? The muscle ups, again, the muscle ups, uh, it depends on what the routine calls for. Mm-hmm. I don't do muscle up routines anymore because of the, the wrist, the injury wrist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, The, the dips where I work out in Wingate, I, I don't like that dip bar. So I would, <laughs> I would substitute and do straight bar dips and that would consist of a muscle up. Um, you know, through, through years of working out and experience, you know what to do and what to stay away from, what's mm-hmm. necessary and what's unnecessary. The muscle ups, you know, that's going to be like in my DNA to do a muscle up. Mm-hmm. So I, I could go a whole year without doing a muscle up and, You asked me to do a muscle up and I'll, I'll show you a real muscle up, you know, <laughs> same thing with a one arm pull up. I, I could go a whole year without doing a one arm pull up, a lever, whatever you asked me to show you, I, I can do it just be based on my trainer. Okay. Um, but like, uh, also the second, like, I think the most qu- asked question was about your front lever because uh, that's uh, that's quite impressive. Even uh, me, when I see it, I think, oh, that's that looks solid. Um, so, uh, like, how how do you maintain it? Is it just uh, by doing pull ups, or uh, how? Why is it so strong? Yes, it, it's it's um it's basically off the training. Like I said, the the routines are never the same every every session. Mm-hmm. So some routines will have a lot of core work mixed into the routine mixed in with the pull-ups and that that would often strengthen me i i don't train for the lever i don't train for the planche um but based on the routines that i do and those push-ups the the holes the planking on the holes all of those things help and transition to those elements you know i may not be able to hold the lever for 30 seconds but if i if i wanted to if i wanted to on that best believe I, I can do that same thing with the plants the, the only element that i i never um mastered or didn't get the hang of is um the handstand and oh. it's because i'm so scared of being upside down I, i feel so awkward i feel like i'm gonna break my neck and every year i tell myself i'm gonna i'm gonna get it and at one time that i was getting close to getting it i, I got injured from doing weighted dips and i i, I stopped but i'm i'm gonna get it trust me guys i'm gonna get the handstand and i'll make you guys happy <laughs> okay so is it a requested thing or what do you say i'll make you guys happy yeah it's a, it's a requested thing because it's it's one of those things we never seen zef do you know a lot of people know me now for the reps and sets they don't they don't um a lot of people don't go back you know that's why i'm surprised that you complimented me on my lever i i, I often never hear that you know because Like, I don't know, people just choose to see the now or what I've been doing yesterday. And, you know, I, I, I could understand that. But I, I came on YouTube from doing, you know, different moves. It wasn't straight sets, reps and sets when I started YouTube. From my first video, the first video I did um, that I uploaded, it was 2004. And I uploaded it in 2007, I think. And... I did I did a, a little routine and then I went into the lever and that was the first time my friend seen that. And that was actually the first time I did it. 
And my friend, he didn't know what it was. He, he, he You could hear him on the video. <laughs> if you guys get some time or yeah, yeah, I care, go back to the first video and you'll hear him like, what's that? I, I, I thought you was doing something new. And you see me go in and start the lever and I, I stayed straight. I didn't, I didn't get perfectly horizontal, but my body was straight in a, a line and I was going there and my, my grip was wide also. So that's, again, that's just from my training that I, I developed those, those strengths to do those different moves. Okay. So it tr really transfers from the reps that you do from the push-ups and pull-ups to the static moves. Exactly. That's why I tell people, don't take those things granted. You can, you can perfect your planche, your lever, all of those things. And I, I noticed the guys that's really good at it, you, you see they, they, their setups are in their bedrooms, meaning they, they practice that day and night by themselves, day and night by themselves, but they don't, you missing the, the other beauties of um, calisthenics, you know, to go outside, to meet people, to make friends, to, to, to work. You know, you, you gotta, you can't just focus on one thing because you're only going to be strong at that one thing. What happens when you get challenged to do something else? What happens when you get older? What happens when you get my age? Wow. You know, you're going to have, you, you'll have, you'll have a good lever. You'll have a good planche. There's going to be another person that's going to have a, a better one, hold it longer. I, I see guys planche on their fingers. You know, that's crazy. I see guys balance on bottles and levers, like, I mean, on, on a planche, like, you know, But I, 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 have, I have yet to see a 43-year-old doing those things. So what happens to these guys when you get to that age? Yeah. You know, what happens to the, the, the friends that you, you made when you get that age? What happens to the people you teach? If you, if you taught anyone, because, you know, you've been practicing that move in your bedroom all this time, you didn't get to go teach anyone. You know, I, I don't want to go off a rant, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay um yeah um what do you think is the 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 reason why you are like on a, such a high level is it consistency is it uh, your good genetics is it uh, the food that you take is it uh, your mindset what or is it a combination of everything uh what's the reason you you just answered it you just answered it in in those steps right there okay <laughs> exactly exactly what you said you just took the words out of my mouth consistency um my genetics I, i i would say my genetics but i i'm not blessed i'm not the I, if i stop working out i'll be skin and bones so i can't really say good genetics i wish um the way how i eat the older i get i eat better and better like i try to eat better and better the older i get because I, i learned how important that was you know i'm not young where i could eat junk food and get up and go do 20 muscle ups again you know i have to watch what i eat uh, i avoid the sugar i avoid salt You know, I, um, the fried food, uh, I, I, I have to reward myself. So if I work out, have a good workout week, I could eat some fried chicken and stuff like that. Um, I, I have to be focused. I, I have to um, be driven. The people that I teach, the people that I inspire, I want them to be stronger than me. So I have to keep excelling. Because when I, when I stop, you know, chances are they, they may stop too or they may feel like that's, that's where it's at. I want them to get stronger. So when they surpass me and I catch up to them, I keep pushing them. So that's, that's the focus that I have that, you know, every, every day I get up, I feel oh, I touch that ball. I touch the ball every day. <laughs> uh, I, from the age of, I would say, 38, Every time I touch the ball, every time the season starts, I feel like, okay, is this your last year, is it, or, or was last year your last year, you know? And I push myself, and then sometimes I, I impress myself sometimes, and I, I'm reminded, like, okay, Zef, you got another year. <laughs> you got another year to do it, you know? And that's, that's, that's how it's been. So... Yeah, you, you have to have focus. I, I set goals for myself every season. Set, I set it every, every day, honestly. I set goals and I try to get them accomplished, if not the next day, by the end of the week. 
do you have an idea how long this will like go on? Like, uh, I don't want to bring you in any any crisis or something, something or it shouldn't uh, sound provocative or something. Uh, but uh, do you think like you will um, do this? Uh, you will be able to do this for 15 years, 20 years uh, or like how how do you feel about the future are you scared or are you motivated to like push further or what's what's the feeling oh i i feel like in, in, until until my deathbed um you know god forbid if I, i get sick or anything that would be the only way to stop me but i if not that i i see me being old and gray and still trying to keep up with the younger generation i'm 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 not scared about what the future holds you know i i, I deal with today right now you know okay. and I, i don't i don't try to worry about things that i can't control right now i can control you know what i do as far as physically and you know help inspire people i, I feel like um I, i i'm i prove my methods work i'm living proof of my method of my barbarian training so every year that I do something impressive, it's more proof that my method works. You know, I'm 43. I'm going to be 44, actually, in June. You know, my goal is to do 50 pull-ups when I'm 50, you know, and ho hopefully, hopefully I'll get 60 this summer, you know. And it, it's proof. You, I don't have to talk at that point. You know, I, I show I show that, you know, you, you don't you don't even have to get any of my routines. You see it in my face, like you like you said when I tell you my age, it's like wow, that that's, that's <laughs> you look good for your age. You know, basically, yeah. I like to hear that. That means I'm doing something good. Yeah, you know, true. And when there are like 20 year olds or 16 year old people uh, and asking you how to get like arms like you that's uh, a good sign uh, that's a good sign that you're uh, doing something <laughs> doing something in the in the good way so um, yeah just take it as a compliment really yes yeah i, I do i do <laughs> I, i hear that all the time like your, your arms and that's that's from decades of just pulling that's decades of pulling and, and changing the, the different variations but you know um it took it took years you know it took years Because, again, I'm naturally a, a slim guy. So the moment I stopped working out, everything would just go back <laughs> to its natural state. So from these, from years of telling my body, I, I, need, I need you guys. I need, I need the arms, you know. Yeah. Body was like, all right, we're going to keep that right there. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Nice. Um, yeah, you you're like um, when you go into workout. What is your mindset like? Are you like uh, during your sets? Are you like really calm or are you aggressive? Are you like how is it? How is your? How does it look like in in your mind? It again. It depends on. It depends on the goal because I'm I'm very competitive. You know, I have my brothers that push me. You know, sometimes um, sometimes I I like to trash talk to help that motivation for them to trash talk and return. So we have to prove it to each other. So, you know, ba based on, based on who I'm working out with, you know, I have my, my brother Kino, AKA the leader, that, that's his name, the leader. So his, by his name alone tells you, you know, he's my biggest competitor because he's the leader, you know, that he took the leader of Barbarian. So I compete with him. And that, that came about from us challenging each other and him beating me and him throwing up his hands and saying, okay, I'm the leader now. <laughs> so that's, that's my focus sometimes when we're going into workout is who's going who's gonna to break first with certain people, you know. And other, others, um, it's really about uh, the goal that I set today. You know, I may have a routine I think of the night before, And I want to get that done to see if I could uh, accomplish it without a break in it or see if I could just accomplish it, period. So I, I will be focused on that. Um, most of the time, it's just I'm out there just to, to maintain and just to get a good workout. That's usually a, a good day for everyone else. You know, a bad day is when um, 
I, I may see a video or someone, something on social media got me upset. And then <laughs> that day, you know, I have a purpose. It, it, it's, a, it's a lot. It, it's different every day, you know. Sometimes some people may need discipline also. I, I'll go in a park and someone may need some discipline in that day and I, I have to break them. You know, I, I don't want to give give out too much secrets, but that that happened. <laughs> you know? Okay. Sometimes, you know, uh, this this calisthenic this calisthenic game, um, it, it, it helped a lot of people in the self esteem and made people, you know, ego driven. You know, mm-hmm. so sometimes if I if I'm fortunate to get to encounter these people. Um, I, I get to discipline them, you know, so that's my mind state for those days. I, I love those days. Those okay. are my favorite days. <laughs> you know, I, I love to catch those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's different every day. Okay. Makes sense. Um, somebody asked if you can explain the quote, um, the hardest set is that you never attempted. The, the heart, the hardest set is the one that you never attempted to me it's it's because um you didn't try you know it, it was it was so hard that you gave up even before you started you didn't tell yourself that you could do it and you couldn't even bring yourself to go and even make the attempt so you don't know you don't know how hard or difficult that that set was because you didn't try it you understand so you you it's it's left as a mystery you know, you you have to try no no matter what, no matter what it is. It could be a, a 50 muscle up routine. If you didn't try it, you couldn't bring yourself to try it. You don't know. You know, you understand? If, if you understand what I'm saying, you don't know how difficult it was if you didn't try it. You have to bring yourself and prepare yourself first and get that routine done in your head. Tell yourself you could do it first before you actually go and do it. If you can't do that, then every routine, every routine is going to be difficult to you. If you can't get the uh, enough uh, motivation for you to go even try a routine. Most people, most people won't try a routine based on what they, they, they think it may be difficult. They hear the, the numbers, they hear the elements that's involved and they won't even bring themselves to even try it or attempt it. And that routine can be easy. You understand? How how would you know if you never tried it? You know, certain certain people they need to see it done so they can know it's achievable before they even make an attempt. You know, um, so yeah, a, lo- a lot of people first you have to complete that routine in your head first. Tell yourself that you can do it and you're going to do it, and then go out there and actually do it. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I would be interested in your nutrition a little um, because uh, something that I heard uh, that the older you get, uh, the less you have to eat because uh, your your body slows down, like the metabolism, is it called? Or like in general, um, do you, you need less and less calories? Uh, is, it, is it right? Do you feel it? Um, I only eat breakfast and dinner but i i've been doing that i've been doing that for years even when even when i was young because um i'm always on the move i'm always active and to sit down and eat sometimes it takes away from my fun even as a child you know my, my mother would have to drag me inside to go and eat um the older i got i i do notice the food affects me differently um, that's why I try to eat, uh, as best as I can. Um, I, I avoid certain things, uh, the portions that I eat as far as it, it, it changes, it changes. If I, if I have a goal and say my goal this month is to get 50 pull-ups, I'm going to eat less. I'm going to eat, um, the food is not going to be heavy. I'm not going to eat that much, um, meat pause um i'm gonna eat more greens i'm gonna drink more shakes 
Uh, but I'm not going to eat more through the course of the day, though. It's still going to be just breakfast and dinner. Dinner is usually like eight o'clock. Um, the specific, the specifics of what I eat, I, I could go on. It, it changes based on my goal again. If I'm trying to lift heavy, if I'm trying to do um, real, real endurance sets, I usually eat heavy. Like I, I don't care as as far as eating light to keep my body light to to stay at maybe one forty eight, one forty eight. That's my high rep weight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say in the one fifties, that's my punishing weight. When I say punishing, that means I'm ready for competition weight where I could do everything. Okay. Sorry if I didn't answer the question fully, but <laughs> <laughs> no, it's perfect. Yes, it is. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you said shakes. Is it uh, whey or like is it self-made uh, shakes? Yeah, self-made shakes. Um, I, I make shakes uh, mostly with my my moss, Griffin moss, which is sea moss. Um. Greens, I use dates. Uh, I I don't I don't eat any dairy. I don't take any protein supplements. Um, I don't I don't do those. I'm not I, I'm not against it, but I, personally, I, I don't I don't do that. Mm-hmm. Okay, because uh, so, like- yeah, coconut milk, um, granola, stuff like that that goes into my my shakes, my smoothies. Okay, other supplements that uh, you would recommend or that you take yourself. Um, I take omega-3. That's, mm-hmm. that, that helps me from the tendonitis. I used to suffer from tendonitis back in 2009. You watch my very old videos. You see me wearing like sleeves. I used to have to endure that pain. Um, and from, from taking the omega-3 that, that alleviated that, uh, what else did I take? D3, B12, um ashwagandha i'm trying to think it, it it's 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 a it's a lot but it, they all natural yeah. herbs and, and minerals okay um as far as i could think i'm uh, it's, it's a lot okay but again they they're all natural uh, natural herbs and, and minerals that i take I can you already could, you, you can box me if you want to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can already see all the the young guys uh, running it's to the lot. drugstore for for omega three and uh, uh, for for this stuff because I remember when I had like tendonitis in 2015 or some 2015 and 2016, I was like so desperate in finding a solution. I also like um, sleeves helped them helped, uh, but uh, like omega three also uh, was working well. Uh, I think I tried. Um, I don't know how to call it, but but from crabs, like um, the uh, they also have some some stuff for the joints in them. But uh, yeah, omega three helps. You say yes, yes, def- big time. And the sugar too. You have to avoid the sugar. Mm-hmm. At at first, when when it went away, I thought it was because of the the one arm pull ups, because that's what really brought the pain. Doing um moves like that. I thought it was because I stayed away from those and it helped alleviate the pain, which it, it, it did, but it was really my diet. Avoiding that sugar and taking that, the omega-3, the flax seeds, eating a lot of um, fish, that, that helped. And, you know, not, not going wood, um, I haven't had it for years, 10 years over. Great. So that, that's good. I, it's like a curse to me. I don't even like talking about it. Like, <laughs> okay. is... We can cut ah. it out of the interview. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. So, um, yeah, we're coming to an end of the interview. Um, we still have some quick questions, quick answers. Um, what do you prefer, pizza or burger? Pizza. Pizza, pizza all day. I just had pizza yesterday. <laughs> pizza okay. all day. Great. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, are you a dog or a cat person? Dog. But I have I have neither right now. Okay. But I'm a dog. I'm a dog guy. I love dogs. Great. Uh, do you have a favorite location for holidays? Jamaica. 
Jamaica is my my second home. Yeah, I, I love Jamaica. That's that's where I do my healing. Um, real quick, like anytime I would get injured, I go to Jamaica and I I'll, I'll come back fresh. Wow. And I, I make sure and document that too to show I was back from Jamaica fresh and able to do something um amazing. It's, it's just the sun and the beach. Mm-hmm. And I advise anyone that too, anytime you get injured, go go take a swim in the beach and just just submerge in the beach and just stay there. You don't even have to swim. You, you just stay in the water and stay there for hours. I, I guarantee you it works wonders. And the coconut water too. <laughs> the coconut water yeah but uh definitely the power of yeah, the sea yeah, it's so uh, truly amazing interesting um yeah who are the athletes that inspire you oh wow it's so it's so many um mainly my brothers i i don't i don't you know questions like that i, I feel bad about answering because I, i i don't like to leave people out there's so many yeah of course all my barbarians you know um <laughs> I don't, I don't want to leave anyone out, but I'm, okay. I'm, I'm inspired by by all of them, you know, all of them. They they know they know who they are. Outside of outside of barbarians, outside of barbarians, I would say um, Doc always, Doc inspires me um, because uh, he's been doing it as long as I've been doing it, and he's staying consistent. He's still going. So, you know, I, I look at people like that. The younger guys, the younger guys, I'm impressed by what they do, but, you know, their consistency, you know, has to, is not enough time for them to show that, to, mm-hmm. to really impress me with that. I, I got to see years, okay. you know, there, there's plenty of guys I've seen in the past. I've seen people come and go, you know, and I don't see them anymore. Guys that used to be strong back then, I don't see them today. Mm-hmm. Um so again, you know, my, my barbarian brothers, they really push me and inspire me. And the, the list goes down from, from ice, Sergi, Javi, Snoop, and tech, of course, tech, um, all my brothers, Jomo. I, you see, I, I feel bad because I'm yeah. just running off the <laughs> names and I, I can't, I can't even, oh, my two closest brothers, Jude and Andy, you know, turn into me just giving shout outs right now. Okay. Yeah. So I'm sorry if I mentioned your name, guy. Because I I uh I left out the question from the community that was like asked five to seven times, um, who is your favorite barbarian? But I know that this is a mean question. Um and I thought that uh y- you wouldn't answer it. Yeah, I can't. All of them all of them are my favorite. Yeah. There's no there's no one in particular. Yeah. Great. Um, do you have uh, an exercise that you hate, uh, like a nightmare exercise for you? Burpees. Burpees. <laughs> I, burpees. <laughs> I hate burpees. There's a there's a, a five MD with the burpees. It's it's fifty fifty burpees, fifty pull ups. That's the worst five MD that you can do. Don't ever try that. Okay. I hate I hate burpees. That that's my worst exercise. Okay. Uh, do you have a favorite book that you want to recommend? Um, not in particular. Um, this this is the this is the last one I'm reading right now. Mm-hmm. The the human con- connection and how we relate in marketing that. That's that's the latest that I'm reading right now. Nothing that I could um recommend offhand. It's just um self improvement books that I read mostly. Not too much uh stories or novels right now. Okay. Great. Um There's so many right here, right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at them right now. Uh do you have a favorite calisthenics event that you've visited? Favorite that I, I, I would say um, my time my time in um, Kazakhstan. I would say that was one of my favorites because it was nonstop working out. They had a, a park set up indoors in the hotel, and oh. three in the morning, no matter what time, there was someone in the gym 
waiting for me to work out. And I, I worked out, I never worked out that much in my life that <laughs> in Kazakhstan. So to me, that that's, that's one of the, the best workout trips I've ever been on. Um, fav, favorite place I would, would say workout, I say Italy. And that's because most of my brothers got to visit with me. So Italy, I had a, I had a real great time there. That's, that's my favorite right now, I would say. Great. Yeah. And the last question, or no, I have one to put in between. If you have to decide for the rest of your life, what do you uh, like only one exercise you can continue? Uh, is it push-ups or is it pull-ups or is it a completely different exercise? Push-ups. Always push-ups. Push <laughs> okay. yeah, that's, that's the first thing I teach. Even my, my kids, push-ups. That's the first thing I do with, it, with everyone too. Start with push-ups. So I, I guess I'll start with push-ups and then with push-ups. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds great. Um, yeah. And the last question, do you have a, a message to the Kellosonex community and to the listeners? Um, I wish I wrote that down. My, my message is to, to stay, stay true, stay, stay grounded. Um, don't get caught up in the right now and, what you see, try to be creative, try to, try to make your own lane. Don't try to copy what someone did or don't try to outdo them. Really try to outdo yourself, compete against yourself. I, I would say that most people, they get caught up in social media and, and seeing what's the next and trying to follow a wave instead of start their own wave or make their own movement and, and keep elevating the game You know, that's that's how you elevate the game by creating something new. So don't get caught up in the flashy of today because those things fade. Don't go for the fast money. Go for the longevity. Go slow grind, work no matter how long. Even if you don't see progress that night, next day you'll see the progress if you continue and you stay focused. So never give up, man. That's That's what I would have to say. Great. Well, we can make a motivational video out of that. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and the last questions. Um, yeah. How can people get in touch with you? How can they support you uh, with your uh, Patreon, you said, with your merchandise? Um, oh, wow. Well, I have so many. Um, uh, if a lot of people, they usually ask me the same questions all the time. My inbox is full. And the best thing, and I, I say it's priceless, is my Patreon because I, I offer so much and it changes every month. What, I, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching sometimes. I do group sessions that we work out. Oh, my light just oh. shut up. Groups, <laughs> that's how long the battery shut up. <laughs> we do, um, it's so much that I offer on the Patreon that I, I don't list because it's so much. And it's Patreon at Zef Zaccavelli. That's that's the best. If you're a fan and you wanna you wanna progress, most all my new videos are on there. I make videos specifically for there. That's why I fell off of YouTube. I don't you know focus too much on YouTube anymore. All my videos are there if you guys are looking for them, and that's where I interact more and answer people's questions. So my Patreon, Zef Zaccavelli. Um, my Griffin Moss for people that's into C Moss is more information on that. So that's griffinmoss.com. The Barbarians Gear the shirts are barbarians.com, or you could go to the IG pay page, the Barbarians Gear page on IG. Any anything else you follow me on IG, the real Zaccavelli, inbox me if you have any questions or details about getting more information. And the Zaccavelli the Don on YouTube and that that's that's it <laughs> great we'll put all the 47 links uh, in the description uh, so uh, you, you everybody can find <laughs> what he's looking for 
Um, yeah, and I want to say thank you, really. <laughs> thank you thank you for taking the time, Zef. Uh, I know uh, you're a busy man. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate your time, appreciate your advice that you give to the young generation, to the listeners, whoever listens to this. And uh, yeah, also big, big thank you to everyone listening. One hour straight, uh, big thing uh, in this, uh, in this uh, like short attention uh, generation. So I'm really happy that you stuck with uh, the end. And uh, if it helped you, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up and help us share uh, Zev's message. And uh, yeah, Zev, you have the last words. Thanks again for your time. And I say goodbye. Oh, thank, thank you, man. I, I, I really, I really admire that you guys reached out to the older guys like me. You know, I was kind of surprised that, you know, yeah, I still value hearing stuff from an old guy like me and hearing <laughs> stuff like, because Honestly, I could keep talking for for forever. You know, there's so much that we haven't spoken about. But um, again, you know, thank you also for being patient. You know, I was a little late. We got caught up in the time zone difference. Um, you know, thank you listeners out there also, you know, for being interested in a, a guy like me and Barbarians. And, you know, we, we're going to keep growing. We're going to keep moving forward. Hopefully you guys can aspire to be barbarians too one day and you have what it takes and I'll come to your country eventually, man. Hopefully I don't have to get vaccinated. <laughs> and, you know, I see you guys, you know, I love, I love you guys all, man. And thanks again for having me on your platform. <laughs>